Yes, it's Deadpool. Yes, it's a lady. I am attracted to the ladies. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foolish Review. Tonight, I'm taking a look at the Diamond Select Marvel Select Lady Deadpool. Now, I'll be honest, I have kind of a love-hate relationship with Marvel Select. When I like a figure, I love a figure. When I don't like a figure, I hate it. So if you've seen any of my reviews in the past, you know there's a very wide line. There's two sides of the street here, and I'm either on one side or the other. And based on that, I didn't have a lot of interest in Lady Deadpool. I'm a 112th scale collector. I collect 6-inch figures. I thought it'll be too big, it won't fit in with the rest of my collection, so eh, yeah, I'll pass on it. But I started seeing pictures this morning, and mmm started getting to me. I ordered it on Amazon and then I thought I need it now. When you're a slave to the plastic you gotta have it at that moment. I called the only comic shop in my immediate area and it usually doesn't carry a lot of toys but had one of these. Here we go. Looking at the package it's huge. It's the standard Marvel Select package and they use pretty much the same size card and window for any figure no matter what the size of the figure itself but it's nice and open you can see everything that comes with the figure you have the logo and everything down the side you have a nice little artwork down here in the corner and this is how big it is I gotta turn it sideways in my review space on the back you have a pretty promotional picture of Lady Deadpool and Headpool you have the older Deadpool which I never got I didn't like the proportions there and then the X-Force cable which you can go back and see the review of that. I, I'm not a huge fan of that figure. You get a bio for Lady Deadpool and kind of Headpool. Big proof of purchase. I, I hadn't noticed that before, but hmm. On the other side, a big nice picture of Lady Deadpool. Enough yammering about the package. I'm going to get this open and see what's going on here. And there we go, all out of the package. And first off, I have to say the sculpt here is, oh, beautiful. They could have went with just a flat costume all over the body, but there are wrinkles added in for just a little bit of dynamicism. Dynamicism? I don't know if that's a word, but I'm using it. It makes it dynamic looking. The wrinkles straddle that fence between too tight and too loose. The costume is definitely form-fitting all over the body, but because of the wrinkles, it makes it look like a costume, not a painted-on color scheme. There's seams, there's belts, there's buckles, there's straps, there's ammo, there's armor pieces, just something to gander at all over the figure. Now the paint on the body, I, it does have just a bit of wash. It makes it look a little bit dirty, a little bit worn, but it's not too heavy. But you get to the belt, you get to her over-the-shoulder straps, there's a nice brown kind of leather look to it. Again, completely works against the whole scheme. Getting up to the head, <laughs> what's there to say about the Deadpool mask? The eyes themselves and the black around the eyes are a bit movie-styled, but going with the overall head, I can see it as a comic style. And then again, with the ponytail sticking out the back, just very dynamic. It adds something to the overall figure. The paint does miss a little bit, especially here on the silver. That's actually a Deadpool logo. Some silver bled into the black here, and you can't really see the eyeballs inside the logo. But there's a little bit of silver here, silver here. It does a nice job of tying everything together. Getting her out of the package, there was quite a bit of articulation paint stuck. So I had to take the heat gun to it, free it up, get the articulation going. There's still some tightness to some of the joints, but not nearly as bad as when I got it out. And as far as looseness goes, it's just the lower torso at the waist. It kind of flops around a little bit. And freeing up the right hip, it's caused a little bit of stress right here. Getting the articulation to go out, and it's still ooh, very tight. I got to kind of push down and up on it. But you can see where this scraped here when I first tried to get it to open up. It wants to go. It's just still locked up a little bit. Probably needs a little bit more heat, but you can see the full range of movement on the left side. And then my only other gripe, uh, except for the wrists, and we'll get to that in the hand section, my only other gripe here is the pins in the upper elbows, both sides. I don't know if it's because of the thinness of the arms or if those pins right there are actually too short, but they don't seem to want to reach into the inner part of the upper elbow. You can see whenever I kind of pull here, it opens up. The pin's not actually locking it in right there. And that's the same on both sides. You can see it opening up there. I can pinch it back together and it looks okay, 
and the articulation is there. It's just not locking in. So I'm going to try to heat that up again and then pinch it together and see what happens there. Okay, I was able to heat it up. I was able to push that pin in a little bit and get it to poke out like it's supposed to be on this side. But because of the tightness of the shoulder, anytime you go to move this or bend it or try to get a pose, it pops back out. In the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal because it's not coming apart. And now that I know about it, I can kind of avoid it by grabbing the upper arm whenever I want to move the shoulder. I just don't know if that's because the pin is too short. Engineering problem or is it user problem? Not sure. I'm just pointing that out for other people that may have a problem like that. Now going over articulation, starting at the very tip top of the head, there's a ball joint for her ponytail. You can get around you can turn it all around but I had to heat that up a lot and kind of work it until it finally popped loose and in fact now I can pop it out of there you can see the ball joint it is secure in there it doesn't just fall out I'm just taking it out for articulation there's a ball at the top of the neck going up into the head you get good tilt which for a Deadpool type character I love that it's just a little subtle expression you know what I mean not a lot of up not bad down and of course swivel hinge and swivel at the shoulder comes up to about right there then swivels around still pretty tight needs some wearing in there's a swivel at the bicep double elbow comes all the way up hinge and swivel at the wrist when the hinge works and I'll get into that when the hands come around there's a ball in the mid torso you can get a little bit of forward a little bit of back but this works more side to side than it does forward and back then there's swivel same thing at the waist there's swivel at the waist you get a little bit of forward a little bit of back side side together it's not a huge range of movement but it's not bad and like I said my waist is a little bit loose I'll have to get in there and do some tightening Hinge and swivel at the hip, you get forward, you get back. The right one on mine still kind of tight, even though I've heated it up a couple times, but like I showed earlier, you can get up that far when it is moving. There's a swivel at the thigh, nicely hidden by straps. It's on the top of both sides. Double knee comes up pretty good. Swivel at the boot, hinge at the ankle, goes back, goes forward. Not bad for armor right there. And then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Lady Deadpool comes with three sets of hands. In the package, she comes with the sword wielding hands or the knife. It's just a grip hand. She comes with two open hands, kind of relaxed. And then she comes with two trigger finger hands. She doesn't actually put her fingers on the trigger. It's more of uh, getting ready to fire. And then here's where we get into my other big sticking point. And I mean sticking point as in stick. I only get hinge on a couple of the hands and one of them is the sword welding hand. As it's cooled down from heating it up, it doesn't want to move as much as it did, but the other sword welding hand is absolutely stuck. And you can see kind of the difference in the discs on this hand. It's thicker, on this hand it's thinner, and it almost looks like there's not a separation between the red and the black plastic. There is but it's almost fused. Now on the open hands, you can see just how big the disc is in that hinge. So it actually hinges. But get to the trigger finger hands, and even though it's an up and down, it doesn't move either. You can almost see that it has the same problem. It doesn't have a big enough disc in there, and it almost seems fused. Even with heat, it's not coming loose. And if I had another problem, it would be the size of the hands. It doesn't bug me too much until I get them up and about, but man, that was me knocking her ponytail off. The hands just seem really big. When she's holding something, or you have them away from her face, it's not as bad. She comes with a small knife. I almost missed this. I thought it was part of the belt. It's not the greatest sculpt. It's kind of flat on the blade. And then overall, it's just silver on top of black. And that goes into the sheath on her belt. It comes that way in the package. And when it was in there, I thought, that's just one piece. That's not coming out. It was kind of tight. It may have been a little bit paint stuck but that does come out. She comes with some type of pistol. It kind of reminds me of Cable. I don't know if this is a real gun. It reminds me of one, a, a smaller submachine gun maybe, but the front looks odd, like a futuristic type weapon. It's a nice sculpt, but there's absolutely no paint on it. It's just the cast black plastic. But I really do like the rocket launcher or bazooka or whatever you want to call this. It's got red paint on it, makes it look weathered, and then the Deadpool symbol on the inside just sets it off. And even with the size of it, it does go in her hand pretty good. The weight of it does kind of stress the articulation just a little bit. 
but she still holds it fairly well. She comes with her swords and the sheath. I love the heart on the back of this. I haven't read a lot of comics with Lady Deadpool, so turning her around and seeing this, yeah, kind of made my day. The image is kind of ruined by the trademark and the copyright being right there on the sword sheaths, but you do have to look at it fairly close to see it. And that just plugs into her back, but it becomes another thing that gets in the way of the hair. So if you have the swords, you have the hair, you have the bazooka, it all becomes a little bit much, but man, it makes for a dynamic figure. Looking at the swords, they were in the sheaths in the package, and they were very, very tight. So at first I thought, these swords don't come out of here, but they actually do. Being in the sheaths in the package, though, it did cause a little bit of bending. Some heat may be able to take that out of there. Looking at the swords, not a bad sculpt. The blade is kind of plain. There is some nice sculpting to the handle, though. And then there's just silver for the blade. Putting them back in the sheath, you kind of want to push from here, not here. If it does get stuck, you're bound to just bend it or actually break it. So I'd push from right here and just work the sword down into it. And it's kind of the same concept, putting it in the hand. The thumb and the finger is attached, so that's not going to go anywhere. You have a certain amount of space to put the sword in. And because of the bumpy bumpies on the sword, it's a little bit tough to get in there. When you go to remove it, I wouldn't pull from here. I'd push from the bottom and then bring it out of the top. And that's because the sword is thin, and I'm a little bit afraid of breakage. Going back to her belt for a minute, the knife on this side. This side has a holster for a pistol, but as far as I can tell, she doesn't come with a pistol that actually fits in there. But, if you take the Marvel Legends Deadpool pistol, it does fit. It looks slightly large for the holster, but it fits down in there, trigger guard and all. So, if you need a pistol on that side... There you go. And if you need her holding a pistol, that also works in that hand. She comes with a base with two foot pegs on it. I, I haven't had to use it to hold her up yet, which is cool. It's got the Deadpool symbol in the middle. It's got a lot of nice weathering to make it look a little bit like oily, dirty metal. I'm not sure exactly what it's supposed to be, but as a base, it works. And then it also works as the bottom of the stand for Headpool. I'm surprised how much I actually like Headpool. Again, I haven't read a lot of comics with him in it, but it's always nice to see him floating around in pictures and here the paint is a little bit dark but overall it's a great sculpt it looks nice there's also lightness to the teeth the white of the eyes it makes stuff stand out now he comes with a clear stand just a rod it plugs into the back of his head which is eh, I kind of feel like is an odd choice a little bit because it limits how much movement you can get if it was just a straight rod coming into maybe the bottom of the neck or something with a ball joint you could maybe get some movement out of it but where it is, you can pretty much just have him looking down a little bit. And that also comes into play with the length of the rod. You put it in the stand, and he's hovering uh, below waist level. So when you put a figure next to him, it doesn't really stand out because he's not hovering around actually talking or anything with them. He's kind of crotch-biting them. I kind of wish this stick was taller come up a little bit. But you do get a point of articulation and that's the propeller on top does spin. Now looking at it, it does look like the jaw is a separate piece and it does look like there's a pin right there, almost like the jaw is articulated, but I can't get this one to move at all. It's either paint stuck or it was originally planned and they nixed that and just fused everything together. Now I don't have a lot of Marvel Select, but here she is with the Guardians of the Galaxy Gamora. You can see that Lady Deadpool is a little bit shorter. I read today that her stats is that she's six foot tall. I can live with Gamora being an alien and kind of bigger, so this will work on your Marvel Select shelf. Putting her beside the Marvel Legends Deadpool that came out last year, again, slightly tall, but if you did some fudging or some action poses or even went in and maybe cut a little bit out of the leg, this would completely work on your Marvel Legends shelf too. The proportions work. The head fits into a six inch scale. Uh, it, yes, very fudgeable here. Here she is with the Marvel Legends Kitty Pride. If you're good with Lady Deadpool being a big athletic woman, yeah, th I can see this on the shelf. And then for giggles, here she is with the Mezco 112th Collective X-Men costume Deadpool. So at the end of the day, even though I don't do a lot of Marvel Select, I'm super excited that I picked this up. Yes, it has its downfalls. There's a point or two of articulation that's loose. There's a couple points that's tight. There's a couple that kind of pop apart, but the overall piece 
looks damn fantastic. And she straddles that line of looking good on both your select and your legend shelf, depending on what you collect or what you put on display. Now I'm probably going to get a lot of Marvel Select collectors in here going, it's seven inch scale, it's not meant to go on your legend shelf, I don't even know why you bought it, because it's not supposed to be there. Hey man, it's plastic. It's Lady Deadpool. If it tickles the fancy of both 7-inch and 6-inch collectors, then that just means more sales. That means more Marvel Select coming out. I don't see why anybody would be mad about product selling. Don't get mad. It's okay. We're all plastic addicts. It's okay. This figure makes me want to go back and read some of the Deadpool core, and that would probably lead me into wanting, you know, Kid Deadpool, Squirrel Pool, Dog Pool, all those. Getting head pull with this, nice little addition. I don't have to go hunting him down anywhere. The Mezco exclusive version of Deadpool came with one. I missed it. Yeah, I was heartbroken, but now that I have this, I'm good. I can just get the standard version and be happy. Lots of nice weapons. A little fragile on some of them, but they still work. I'm good with that. Overall, money well spent. I'm happy with this. I will find a place for this in my display. Definitely. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the foolish.